Hey doing folks, it's Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting and today I'm going to talk to you guys about tree stands on public land. Especially tree stands that people leave on public land all year long. Is this cool or not? This great pine bedding area back here and a congregation of about two or three trails that meet. And they come into this open area. They come across this beaver creek right here and there's tons of deer droppings here. So I'm like, hey, this is a good place. Let's take a look at this. And then I see that. Somebody else already has that idea. As I'm walking down out of these pines and hemlocks looking for a rub, I find that. Archery and gun season have passed and now we're into muzzleloader season and now it's time to go ahead for me and start thinking about getting my stands on public land back in. I know that this is a topic that not everybody agrees on. I love if you guys go ahead and make comments, but please remember, uh, be respectful whether you agree or disagree with other people because we're all part of the same hunting fraternity. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about the fact that leaving stands on public land all year long is illegal. In New York State, you can put them out two weeks prior to season, but they must be removed at the end of the hunting season. In PA, you can put them out two weeks prior to season, and they must be removed two weeks after season. And then in Ohio, you can put them out September 1st, but they must be removed by February 1st. I did talk to two uh, wildlife officers on the phone, uh, one from New York State with the Department of Environmental Conservation and another from Pennsylvania from the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. Uh, when I asked about this topic of whether or not tree stands could be on public land after the season, both of them gave me the same answer. No, it's illegal. If they're found, they will be confiscated and they will be sold at auction. We all know that our state and federal government does not appropriate enough money to be able to protect our natural resources, and it also doesn't appropriate enough money to be able to hire enough wildlife officers to be able to take care of our natural resources and to be able to keep the public safe on public lands. Because of this, when I talked to both wildlife resource officers, they said the same thing. Our job is to make sure we protect the habitat, we protect the wildlife, and we keep the public safe. And because of that, without having enough wildlife officers, sometimes we just don't have enough time in the day to complete some of those tasks like checking on stands that are illegally kept on public land after they're supposed to be removed. It's just the bottom line. We just don't have the time to do it. I think a lot of hunters have taken advantage of this over the past few years. I think hunters are more apt to leave stands on public land knowing there's not a high risk that they're going to be found and confiscated. And because of this, I think we're in a situation that many hunters who do follow the rules like I do get out and get frustrated because every time we think we find a place which is going to be great to hunt, somebody's got to stand there illegally that is there year round where that person may think that that stand in that area is their private property, and it's not. The stand is public, the area is public, and anybody can hunt there. On this old logging road and a couple of trails across it up above, a couple of real nice rubs up there, and sometimes on private land, this is what you're up against. Someone's already got a tree stand here, they got it set out off season, but well, what are you going to do about it? It's part of hunting public and finding those areas where there's deer without a ton of pressure. The second thing that I want to talk about is stand maintenance. So hopefully we all understand the importance of checking your stands periodically at least once a year to make sure they're safe. Uh, straps could fray, buckles could break, uh, screws and bolts and nuts could become loose. 
Uh, you may be in a situation in which a metal stand rusts or an old wood stand rots. Uh, branches and trees can fall on top of stands and cause problems. And the biggest issue that a lot of people don't do is at least once a year you should loosen and retighten all of your straps on a tree because as the tree grows, it puts excessive pressure on the straps and the buckles. And as you are climbing up a tree with all this excessive pressure, it could cause them to snap and you could fall and get hurt. There are some hunters out there who don't ever check their tree stands. The only time they sit in those tree stands is when they're out hunting. This is a recipe for disaster. Uh, not only could you get hurt, you may end up in the hospital or uh, your significant other may end up cashing in on your life insurance policy and then you definitely won't be hunting anymore. So it really is important, no matter whether you're on private land and public land following rules or even public land not following rules, that you make sure you keep an eye on your tree stands and that you correct anything that's wrong with them so that you're safe when you're out in the field hunting. People on private lands, I think, uh, already have a pretty good grasp of this. They're checking tree stands uh, quite a few times a year. One of the reasons they're able to do this so easily is because it's their property and they can drive their truck or their four-wheeler right out to the stand. They can take their tools right out there and they can replace or repair anything that they need to right out in the field. For those of us that hunt public land, you may have a stand three-tenths of a mile out, a half mile out, maybe even a mile out at times. Sometimes you just don't have the time to get out there. And sometimes it's difficult to get tools all the way out there, especially on bad weather days. It's one of the biggest reasons that I bring my tree stands back home with me. I get them in a warm garage. I have a beer. I watch some football. I'm able to replace parts that are worn out. I'm able to fix things on those tree stands and make sure that those tree stands are prepared and safe for the following hunting season. We're walking up this logging trail. There's great bedding of hemlocks up in front of us. We just got talking about the fact up at the top of this near this field is going to be a great place to put a tree stand. And at the same time I told Thomas, I said, watch, there's going to be a tree stand up there. Look at that Taj Mahal. Somebody's got a big old tree stand up there. The last thing I want to talk about is ethics. The bottom line is this is public land that we all use. Some of you are going to agree with my point of view, some of you won't, and that's all right. And that's why we have areas that we can comment. It's just a matter of being respectful and listening to other people's comments. You may not agree with them, but it's important to listen and maybe at some point you'll understand their point of view and where they're coming from. The one thing I struggle with a lot is I found this place first attitude. That's fine and dandy if you're following rules and guidelines and you're putting tree stands up just prior to season and in season. But if you're putting up a tree stand and you're leaving it there all year long and you think that this area is your own private property, it's not. Public land is just that, it's public land. And if you put a tree stand out on public land, that also becomes public land and other people can use it. It is important to make sure you respect other people's property and I would never remove a tree stand even if it's out there illegally. That's not my right and I do respect other hunters that I would never touch their stuff. Most of the scouting that I do is the end of February after snow is off the ground, March, April, and into May. And when I find tree stands that are out there on public property illegally, I will go ahead and mark them on onyx and I'll put them in a white color so I know that signifies somebody else's stand. walking up this creek valley off the edge of some ag fields and into this selective cut of pines in here. Just above this selective cut of pines is this huge thick bedding area. And then off to my left and uphill, probably about 400 yards, is where the ag fields are. Problem is somebody's already got a stand sitting up there so I gotta go ahead and figure out where I can go. Last March, uh, the pups and I went out and scouted a piece of property that was just less than 300 acres. I had actually done a bunch of e-scouting on it and uh, thought the place had a lot of potential. Had some ag fields up on top of a hill. It went down a valley into a stream. And then the other side of the stream, it went up a hill into some pines and into a clear cut. There was great bedding. There was great food. There was water. It was just an area that I think had a lot of great transition areas from food to bedding and bedding to food. 
the pups and I got up there in March. We ended up doing a hike. And by the time I was done, I was totally frustrated and deflated. We found 14 stands up the end of March on this public property. Of all the places that I e-scouted, there was only one place that didn't have some other person stand close to it. I just think it's unfair. I don't think it respects other people and the idea that we all own and use this public property together. My idea is quite simple. If I find a tree stand that is placed illegally on public land and I decide after all of my work that it's still a place that's got a lot of quality deer sign and it's worth hunting, I have no problem putting a tree stand up near or close to that person's stand that was put there illegally. I think it's disrespectful, I think it's unfair, and quite honestly, I think it's just lazy that people don't remove their tree stands when they're supposed to at the end of hunting season. Do I actually set up right on top of somebody else's stand? No. Even if it's put there illegally past the time it's supposed to be removed, number one, I do respect that hunter took the time to find that place. And number two, I don't want to hunt around areas that are highly pressured. I want to find places on public property where I can get away from people, where I can find some more mature bucks that may be unpressured and have an opportunity to be able to enjoy the woods with nature without having confrontations with other hunters. It is important we understand that we all share this land together and we're all there for the same purpose, to be able to enjoy nature and have a successful hunt. As it relates to those stands that I find set up a couple weeks prior to season or in season, I stayed totally away from those areas. Those hunters followed the state and federal rules and guidelines. They set up those stands when they were supposed to, and kudos to them. I hope that they have a great hunt and enjoy that area, and I go find another place to go to. Finding a stand on public property after season poses a couple questions for me. Uh, number one, is a stand even being used anymore? Uh, is it a stand that someone only uses once a year? Or maybe is this a stand that's only used for archery, that's only used for gun, or maybe it's used both for archery and gun. As someone who's following the rules and guidelines and going out there to try and find deer sign and place stands and locations where I got a great opportunity to get a shot at either a doe or a buck, it's really frustrating to sit down and find that people have their stands out there all year long. This is Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting. Hoping you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll talk to you soon. See ya.